it's all about, it's not what the, the child does that triggers you. It's about you turning within and learning to hold those wounded parts of yourself. Yes. So you don't react, you can respond. That's the responsibility of adults, you know? And so you talk about this universal human as mature adults and, and I would love for you to get into, I just don't think we have the tools. We're never taught how to cultivate emotional awareness, how to be okay with everything that, you know, and observe and become aware of, of these feelings that are coming up and then have the space and awareness to choose from love rather than get hijacked and, and pulled into the fear reaction, which as, you know, conscious as I am and as an intellectually you know, I understand your, your, your teachings. I, even last night after reading half of your book, I'm getting triggered and like hijacked into frustration and reaction and taking things personally. So I would love for you to just to, to share with us how you've cultivated emotional awareness, how we can learn to do that. Um, and, and start to create the space and the capacity to choose love come from love. Oh, exactly. I do those things too, by the way. It's uh, everyone, we're all students in the Earth School. And the Earth School is a learning environment, an educational environment in which we are continually being shown the parts of our personality beyond which we must move if we're going to be able to give the gifts that we were born to give. So, if you find yourself becoming angry or judgmental or vindictive or want to die or want to kill someone or eat or need a fix. These are not your obstacles to spiritual development. They are avenues. These are the parts of your, they're messages from your soul. You can look at it that way. And your soul is telling you, fear is present in you now. Love is present, is active in you now. And it's your choice to choose uh, to act or not to act. To, and what I suggest, and what creating authentic power requires, is challenging the fear and cultivating the love. The bare bone structure of self-transformation is the same. Number one, you can't change anything in yourself and, and, until you become aware of what it is you want to change. And that's emotional awareness. Number two, once you're aware of it, it won't change until you decide to change it. And that's where your volition comes in. And uh, there are so many people sharing from their wisdom and their heart now. And they're all students in the Earth School. And they all have frightened and loving parts of their personality, but use that as a shorthand for fear-based and love-based or aspects of yourself. So what I've discovered in myself is <clears throat> not to not to look at myself or evaluate myself if I did something like that. Uh, to, to always do that from my high water mark and not my low water mark. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I should look at myself and define myself by my low water marks, I wouldn't be able to share any of these things. I would say, how can you do that? You're a hypocrite. But I don't. I look at my high water marks. I look at what I know and I know I know. I look at what I feel. I look at what, uh, by that I mean what gives me meaning, what fills me with passion and wanting to share without second agenda. So, um, the first, one of the first parts about creating authentic power is, well, of course, to set the intention. But after that, to develop emotional awareness. And Linda Francis, my spiritual partner, and I have written a book called The Heart of the Soul, Emotional Awareness. And it, and, and it it really addresses it in depth. But I want to give you a little caveat. If you only read the book and you don't do the exercises, uh, you'll know a lot about emotional awareness, but you won't be emotionally aware. You have to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And doing it requires courage and commitment. Uh, because if you're going to become emotionally aware, you need to become aware of your emotional currents in terms of physical sensations in your body. Physical sensations, not, oh, I feel good, I feel up, I'm down, I'm depressed, oh, I don't want to get out of bed, I feel grumpy, I feel, none of that helps. None of that, that's emotional ignorance. 
Emotional ignorance is not, not, not feeling anything. This is in, what I'm describing as emotional illiteracy. But if you want to become emotionally literate, you can not only experience but f articulate the physical sensations in your body in specific areas. Let's, let's start with three of them, your chest, your, your throat, your chest, and your solar plexus. And you can look for physical sensations. And by that I mean if, you, if fear is present, they will, be, they will be stabbing, burning, throbbing, aching, churning, uh, crushing, or, or, or compressing. These are physical sensations. And when fear is present, they hurt as much as getting your finger caught in a car door. Heart thro heart heartache is not poetic. That that is a real thing. Mm -hmm. So once you do, once you get in the practice of putting your attention inward and focusing on your on start with these three areas because they're the easiest for me to feel physical sensations. Then the next thing uh, to do is you'll understand that you're either experiencing a fear-based part of your personality or a love-based part. And the next thing is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? By utilizing your emotional awareness, you are automatically creating a gap between an impulse you feel and the action. For example, if anger comes up in me, and, and I spent a lot of my life angry, Usually there was no gap. The anger came up and I let people know about it. When you develop emotional awareness, you can use that gap to do something you've not done before. Consciously choose what you're going to do next. And that's where responsible choice enters the picture. When you make a, a, a responsible choice is a choice that creates consequences for which you're willing to assume responsibility. So creating authentic power, in other words, requires making responsible choices of love. It's the ability to distinguish within yourself between love and fear mm. and choose love all the time, no matter what's happening inside you, like rage or resentment or jealousy, or what's happening outside of you, like another 9-11 event. And this is the new potential of the new consciousness. This is not a gift from the universe. This is a potential. That is the gift, the potential. But bringing it into being requires you. It requires your courage, commitment, compassion, and conscious communication and action. If you could just define kind of the context so that people see what this new, the shift from the old paradigm to the new consciousness kind of looks like, uh, I think that would be helpful if you could just give, you know, the, the five minute version of just the, the basic terms of that create the context of this universal human. Sure. Um, the relationship between a universal human and a multi-sensory human is that universal humans emerge from, multi, from authentically powerful multi-sensory humans. So creating authentic power is not like a shortcut to the universal human. It's a requirement. Um, external power is the ability to manipulate and control. If you're feeling lonely, and your solution for it is to go out and find a partner, that's the pursuit of external power. It's changing the world, or trying to change the world, in order to make yourself feel better, or feel valuable and safe. If, uh, if a business fails, you create another one. If you want attention, you um, look at how you dress, you, you try to impress people with your education, sexuality, um, wealth, where you live, how you talk. All of that is the pursuit of external power. Uh, badges and weapons symbolize external power. 
a corner office on a high floor. That's a symbol of external power. Money is a reflection of power as external. The more you have, the more power you have. That is the power that enabled us. That is the understanding of power that enabled us to evolve since our origin is a species. We were a five sensory species that evolved by surviving and survived by pursuing external power. Now we are a multi-sensory species that evolves by growing spiritually and that grows spiritually by creating authentic power, by aligning ourselves with our souls, with harmony, cooperation, sharing, and reverence for life. And by doing this, we allow ourselves to give what we were born to give. And it's very important. There is a quote from uh, the Gospel according to Thomas, which, by the way, you will not find in the Bible that the church recommends. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's because this gospel and uh, another one or two uh, were recorded by uh, the Gnostics, which was a Christian cult, which was so threatening to the church that the church virtually eliminated it. And in the second century BC, AD, pardon me, they uh, uh, were on the run for their lives, and they hid some of their teachings mm -hmm. that were just discovered again in 1948. Uh, but this is a bit of a sidetrack, but it's an important one because I've always been touched by one of the things that Thomas says Christ said, although I don't know how he did that because Thomas wasn't alive when Christ was alive, and nobody who was alive when Christ was alive, to my knowledge, wrote anything down. So it was all oral. And as we know, um, even with the best intentions, sometimes transmission of oral language, unless there's a tradition, like in the Aboriginal cultures, that causes distortion after a while. Mm. But this saying that Thomas shared, among others, is so strong, I don't think it's distorted. Thomas said, Christ said, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. That's what I mean when I say gifts, the gifts that you were born to give. Mm. And it could be anything. It can be, in your case, healing and shedding new light and experiences onto this fundamental dynamic. Uh, it can be raising a family. It can be becoming a carpenter or a welder. It can be becoming a business person and infusing commerce with a new understanding and new intentions. But whatever it is, you can't give the gifts that you were born to give while you're angry or jealous or resentful or caught in the addictive sexual energy current or can't stay away from the refrigerator or looking for somebody else to complete you. All of these are experiences of fear, and yet they're common. They're so common. That's what, it takes courage to wake up in your life right now uh, because it takes courage to be a spiritual person in a world that doesn't yet recognize spirit. It's a world of uh, discord and competition and hoarding and exploitation. Now, I, I want to clarify this. At the core, in my experience again, of human experience, is, let's call it the pain of powerlessness. Mm -hmm. It is the experience of, and as a healer, I think you know this already, but it's the experience of not belonging and wanting to belong. It's the experience of wanting to love and feeling like you don't, you don't have the, the ability. It's the feeling of wanting to be loved and experiencing your, and knowing that you're unlovable. It's, it's the feeling of not wanting other people to be able to see you the way you really are inside because they wouldn't want anything to do with you. It, it's the feeling or the ex 
perception that you are inherently flawed, Mm -hmm. intrinsically defective. This is the pain of powerlessness. And you can write that with a capital P. It's excruciating. It is excruciating. And everyone has it. When we were five sensory, we strive to mask the pain of powerlessness by changing the external world. We became angry, jealous, resentful. All of these terribly painful experiences are actually manipulative endeavors. Mm. But anything that you experience as painful emotionally comes from fear. So that's why emotional awareness is so important in creating authentic power and now in evolving collectively and individually. So now that we're multi-sensory, we still have the pain of powerlessness. But instead of looking outside and trying to change the world, blaming someone else for what we feel or crediting someone else for the good things that we feel, we look inside. And what we find there is that the pain we feel in emotional pain is not caused by the outside world. I want to say that again. Your emotional pain is not caused by the outside world. The outside world activates dynamics inside you. It activates internal dynamics, and those internal dynamics produce pain, physical pain. And trying to avoid that pain by acting it out, by withdrawing emotionally when you're jealous, by shouting or lashing out with words or fists when you're angry, by weeping, by feeling that you're superior in life and entitled or inferior and needing to please continually. All of these are pursuits of external power and all of them are now destructive. Now, be aware, when a frightened part of a personality gets what it wants, it becomes happy. You get the girlfriend, you get the boyfriend, you get the Mercedes, you get the house, you get whatever you it wanted. But as soon as it's, you lose that, it loses that. For example, she wants to live with someone else. He wants to live with someone else. Your new car got scratched by someone maliciously with a key. And suddenly you're in free fall, down into fear again. It's like riding a roller coaster. Well, creating authentic power uses that ride. You use that ride to align yourself with your soul, to challenge the fear and cultivate the love. And the best that you can get with the pursuit of external power is happiness, but it's temporary. It's, it's ephemeral. But what you create in yourself when you create authentic power is joy. And that's not dependent on the external world. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.